new videos every day. Now this is part two of our stress video. A lot of people think about nutrition you know, in terms of what you should eat, and there's a whole other side of it too in, in terms of what you shouldn't eat, what you shouldn't consume, and that's an elimination. So you're keeping something out of your diet that has an undesired effect. So we are talking about drugs and stress. So if you think that this video doesn't apply to you because you don't do legal drugs, I got news for you, this one is for you because we are talking about everything from a cup of coffee to a cigarette to alcohol, uh, prescription drugs, I mean all across the board. And in fact, if you live in America, this video is for you. Now if you haven't watched the first video on stress part one, I just really want to tell you that stress is a natural function. It's, it's a natural biological process and it's, it has its place. You know, we are supposed to be fearful sometimes. We are supposed to be uh, nervous sometimes because we either need to get away from that situation or we need to be prepared to fight, whatever the circumstance may be. But the problem is when we are constantly stimulating that process. So we're constantly worried. We're constantly angry. We're constantly nervous. We're constantly anxious. That cycle keeps on going rather than it being... Um, stimulated every once in a while in the appropriate situation and when it's constantly stimulated it's going to have major effects on our mental and physical function. Drugs affect that stress response in three different ways. Either it has a direct impact, it directly mimics the stress response. Two, it causes withdrawal symptoms when you're coming off the drug which um, will cause stress as well or three it'll deplete your vitamins and that vitamin deficiency will cause stress as well so there's three different ways and we're going to go over those so the first category is stimulants and amphetamine type drugs so these are actually everything from caffeine to illegal substances and everything in between. So these, a lot of these things that we're going to be talking about right now that directly stimulate the stress response are things that people do every day. So we're talking about caffeine, you know, a cup of coffee, um, tobacco, um, and then even prescription drugs, ADHD medications, and then all the way up, you know, to, to smoking meth. So um, there's a lot of things in between here, but um, these directly stimulate the stress response. They increase your heart rate, they interfere with your sleep patterns, they interfere with GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that has a calming effect on the brain, they stimulate your sympathetic nervous system. And I've talked about that nervous system in pre previous videos. But basically, when your sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, that decreases your digestive function, so you're actually absorbing less nutrients no matter how good your diet is. Um, these types of drugs also elevate your stress hormones and they increase your stress response. So there's a lot of um, results from these types of drugs and if you're that person that is doing one of these on a daily basis, you're impacting your stress and you might not, might not even know it. Now if you are one of those people that has an anxiety problem or you know that you're that chronic worrier, the last thing you need is to have a stimulant or an amphetamine type drug in your daily routine. Because the fact is, it's just gonna make your stress worse. And in some instances, your stress could be a direct result from that stimulant rather than being because of a situation or because of an issue you're going through. It could be just because you have that stimulant in your diet or in your daily routine. And it's so crazy because there's actual disorders that are associated from these drugs. There is called a caffeine-induced anxiety disorder. There is an amphetamine-induced anxiety disorder and an amphetamine-induced mood disorder. See, these are actual diagnoses that are related to just someone consuming a stimulant or an amphetamine-type drug.
So the second way drugs can impact your stress is through withdrawals. So maybe you've been around someone who has tried to quit smoking. Well, what happens? Well, their stress level is pretty elevated. They're anxious. They can actually get pretty moody. Uh, a lot of times that's not the person you want to be hanging around because of all their stress and anxiety associated with stopping smoking. So that's an example of a long-term uh, withdrawal. But think about how long it takes them to go without a cigarette before they begin to feel discomfort. So if they're in a movie theater, maybe they're watching a movie and they haven't had a cigarette for a few hours, they can actually start to have withdrawal symptoms and it hasn't been that long. And the same thing can be with someone who's a chronic coffee drinker. How long does it take them to not have that cup of coffee before they begin to feel those withdrawal symptoms? Well, the first thing you're going to experience is cravings. So those cravings, you know, you, your body's telling you, I want that substance. And then it can get worse from there. Those can go to headaches. It can go to um, increased anxiety. And then it can even go further than that if something is, um, you know, a severe substance. Headaches are something that a lot of people get on a very continual basis. And you may not realize that it could be associated with the fact that that's actually a withdrawal symptom. Now, when you're getting off of a drug, it can actually have the opposite effect that the drug was meant to do. So if you are taking a drug that is meant to lower your anxiety level, when that drug begins to wear off, you actually can have increased anxiety. Or if you are consuming a stimulant, um, when that drug begins to wear off, you can actually experience the opposite, exhaustion, fatigue, um, or if you are taking a drug for depression and it's supposed to boost your mood and you know make you feel happier, when that wears off, it can actually cause you to have greater depression than before you had before when you took the drug. So the point is, is that whatever drug or whatever substance you're taking, when you when the drug begins to wear off, the withdrawal symptom itself can be the opposite of what the drug was meant to do. Now the reason I brought that up is because there are people who take anti-anxiety medications and they're known as anxiolytics. And these medications are very addictive. And the problem with them is that when the drug begins to wear off, it can cause very much so increased anxiety. So the person is taking the medication to reduce anxiety, but then when it wears off, it can cause even more anxiety. And I want to read you the, the official psychiatric disorders that can be caused from these anxiolytics. So we have anxiolytic-induced anxiety disorder, anxiolytic-induced mood disorder, anxiolytic-induced persisting amnesic disorder, anxiolytic-induced persisting dementia, anxiolytic-induced psychotic disorder with delusions, anxiolytic-induced psychotic disorder with hallucinations, anxiolytic-induced sexual dysfunction, anxiolytic-induced sleep disorder, anxiolytic intoxication, anxiolytic intoxication delirium, anxiolytic-related disorders not otherwise specified, anxiolytic withdrawal, and anxiolytic withdrawal delirium. So basically we have disorders here that are a result from the medication. It's actually causing a disorder that wasn't there in the first place. So when someone is taking an anti-anxiety medication, it can actually be causing another disorder and, and not, not really be relieving the problem in the first place. Now, the other thing I want to point out is I've heard people say before, and maybe you've heard people say this too, well, I smoke because it calms me down, or I drink coffee because it relaxes me. Well, these are stimulants, and they're supposed to excite you. So that's sort of a confusing phenomenon because it's a stimulant, and it's supposed to excite you, yet it's calming you. Well, what's going on there is that the, that calming, re relaxing effect is actually undoing that withdrawal symptom. So the reason why that person feels relaxed or that person feels calm 
is because they're not experiencing those withdrawal symptoms anymore. So if you are, if that category fits you, if you're that person who is calmed or feels more relaxed by taking a stimulant, that's actually a very good sign that you can be addicted. And the third reason uh, why drugs can impact your stress is because they are considered toxins. Your body wants to get rid of them. So that's why alcohol and caffeine are considered diuretics. And a diuretic is something that causes your kidneys to work harder. Your kidneys work harder to basically flush your blood, so you have to pee a whole lot more. Um, and, and then also, when someone is taking a substance or taking a stimulant or, or you know, alcohol or caffeine or whatever it may be, um, a lot of times the effect that they're seeking when they take that substance is actually a symptom of the body trying to detox. So if your heart's beating faster, if you feel energized, a lot of times that's the symptom that your body is showing because it's it's initiating all the organs. It's, you know, sending out all these signals to tell your body to get rid of this because this is not what your body needs. And in that process, in that detox process where your body is trying to flush this thing out, you burn through your vitamins. So we're talking major stress here. Your body is freaking out because you need vitamins. And before we move on, I want to mention a few more things about two drugs. The first is marijuana. So the first point is that it doesn't feel as good coming down as it did when you were getting high. So just like, you know, feeling good when you were drunk or feeling good when you were speeding on, you know, your drugs or if you were high on marijuana, you're not going to feel very comfortable. You don't feel very good when you're going down when the drug is wearing off and the reason why this is happening is because the point two is that you're going through a detoxification you're burning through those vitamins your body is trying to get rid of that junk and that's not going to make you feel very good it's going to contribute to your stress and then number three is that you can actually get paranoid when on marijuana so there's people that have increased anxiety when they're smoking marijuana and there are actual psychotic disorders, psychiatric disorders, um, that are related to cannabis consumption. So there is a cannabis-induced anxiety disorder and a cannabis-induced psychotic disorder. And the last drug I want to mention is alcohol. And just like with all the other drugs, when you come off that drunken state or that high of the drug, you are going to go through withdrawals. And a hangover is the detoxification process. Your body is trying to get rid of that alcohol and you are burning through your B vitamins faster than any other substance you could consume. Your body is trying to get rid of that substance. And when that happens, you have withdrawal symptoms and that's what a hangover is. And, and there is an actual psychiatric disorder associated with alcohol consumption, and it basically is alcohol-induced anxiety disorder. In other words, alcohol consumption can cause increased anxiety. Now, another problem associated with drugs is that they interfere with your sleep patterns. They are going to mess up not only the length of time you sleep, but also the quality of your sleep. And when you don't get enough sleep, you are moody. <laughs> you're nervous, you're more prone to anxiety, you can be more stressed out and irritable because your body needs sleep. And so there are substances that actually induce an anxiety disorder. So we have anxiolytic induced sleep disorder. We have caffeine-induced sleep disorder, we have amphetamine-induced sleep disorder, and alcohol-induced sleep disorder. So if you are on one of these substances and you don't sleep good, it could be the, the result of just taking that drug in the first place. Unfortunately, in our society, people have the tendency to self-medicate. So if you're stressed or if you have, you know, anxiety issues, you may drink alcohol because you want to feel more calm or you may smoke pot because you're trying to feel more relaxed. And so you're actually using a drug to reduce your stress 
when in actuality it can be increasing your stress. So even like the drugs that are we talked about anxiolytics or you know like Xanax, they're actually some of the most abused prescription drugs in the market and they're sold illegally all the time because people want to feel relaxed and yet in the long run it's contributing to more anxiety. So it's my opinion that a lot of people who have anxiety problems is just the result of a drug. So whether you realize or not that that pot of coffee every morning is actually increasing your stress or that those, um, you know, mixed drinks or all that beer that you're drinking on a daily basis is burning through your B vitamin so fast that that's contributing to stress or that your ADHD drugs that you've taken you know, have interfered with your sleep patterns. And so when that happens, you have more anxiety. So, you know, whether whether or not those are, are what you're, you know, taking throughout the day or the other things that we've mentioned, um, if that's something you're doing on a daily basis, it is having an impact on your anxiety. And the last thing I want to mention is we have talked about different types of drugs, you know, alcohol, amphetamines, enzyolytics, marijuana, all these different types of things. But there's a lot of prescription drugs that have anxiety as a, as a side effect as well. So if you are someone that has um, increased anxiety, go talk to your pharmacist about what uh, prescriptions you're taking, what medications you're taking. And y'all can narrow down which ones may be causing increased anxiety and if they find something and, and they're very knowledgeable they know more about your medications than most doctors do so talk to them first narrow it down and then if there's some found that could be increasing your anxiety talk with your doctor about a better alternative So yes, people do self-medicate. And then there's something else that also occurs and it's called polypharmacy. So someone may start out, you know, they have trouble concentrating so they're put on an ADHD medication. Well, one of the side effects of ADHD can be increased anxiety. And so because of that increased anxiety, they're put on an, an anxiolytic. And one of the side effects of that could be um, increased mood disorders and so you know that person goes back to their doctor and their doctor puts them on um, you know another medication to calm the moods and to kind of help chill them out and so the long-term look is that someone could be on five or six medications and it all was a result of one problem in the beginning and they're all trying to cover up the side effects of each one of the other ones and so all the while, all these medications and all these drugs are burning up your vitamins. Your body is detoxing and trying to get rid of all this junk. And when that happens, you're going to have vitamin deficiencies. And when you have vitamin deficiencies, you have increased stress. And that's our next video. So subscribe to our videos and take care of yourself. I will see you next time. Woo! <laughs>